and uh, welcome to Justice Radio Network. Here we are again, and instead of Stories from the Heart tonight, we are going to be having a conversation with Ken Scott from Gemstone University and Pantera Society. Uh, Ken has been uh, researching, investigating, and doing all sorts of jigsaw puzzle putting together for many, many years. I know he said used the number 25 years and also for beyond that with realizing there's way things going on in the world that uh, are not natural and I for myself I do see that there are more than one reality that is the natural reality and the reality that's been imposed upon us by uh, this system that we all seem to be seeing that's going on so um, First of all, I just want to introduce my usual co-host, that's uh, Libby is here with us, and that's really great to have you here, Libby. Thank you so much for joining us. Very happy to be here. That's awesome. And we also have the one that we don't really have a name for, but a lot of us known as Ciro. So, hey, Ciro, glad you're hey. here too. Hey. hey, everyone. Glad to be here. Great. And, of course, we also have Mr. Ken. And we're really, really glad to have you here with us. Thanks so much, Ken, for joining us. Hi, thank you very much. Yeah. So, yeah, we're really uh, uh, interested. Um, I've been doing a little bit of reading on, on the um, Gemstone University. There's like a lot, a lot of information in there. And I really appreciate getting the chance to take a look in there. And um, I know that a lot of our listeners are very interested in the work you're doing. Uh, we've all been on this route for quite some time. We've taken different routes. We've, uh, most of us that have been listening to this uh, group conversation that we call Stories from the Heart, where we share our stories of our experiences, we've, uh, most of us have just stopped using the legal name. We've recognized it's not who we are. It's not actually ours to use and uh, various uh, types of experiences with that. But we do recognize that uh, people like you yourself have uh, you know different um, methods and ways to find your way out of the system so but before we ask you any questions I'd love you to share with us what got you started on this path and you know a brief um, story of your story because this is about stories from mm -hmm. the heart so yeah give us a just a, a brief um, outline of how you got to where you are so that'd be great thanks Okay, very good. Thank you. So you use the reference of jigsaw puzzles. You've probably heard me reference that in other things that I've done, mm. interviews or presentations. Um, uh, actually, my first experience of being on the radio with somebody was about, I think, five or six years ago. And she asked me to describe who or what I was. And I said, well, you can refer to me as the master puzzler. Uh, and I made that up fairly spontaneously, but it was based on the fact that in earlier times when I would talk to people, I would explain something about my childhood, which was one of my most favorite things to do was to do to uh, build or put together jigsaw puzzles. And as I did that, I would play games in my head. I would be in the world tournament of jigsaw puzzlers and all that kind of stuff. Um, but more importantly, I realized long after that, uh, when I looked back at it, I was training my, my mind and I was training to see systems and patterns and uh, the nuances of relationships. And I was training it also to learn how to integrate pieces and systems and nuances and, and patterns and all of that. Because a jigsaw puzzle has layers of patterns. Uh, it has layers of, of course, the macro scale. It has the complete picture. Underneath that, you can look for uh, nuances and patterns in the color schemes and um, shading and all kinds of things like that. And then, of course, at the physical level, you have the physical pieces of cardboard that are cut in patterns. And there's a system of how to put those patterns together. So... I call myself, among other things, a master puzzler because of that training, uh, unbeknownst to me when I was a child, that I was training myself to doing that, uh, to learn how to do that. Uh, then I um, uh, basically set out at a certain point to figure out the system and pattern 
of this world because I had a very innate sense. Uh, you've already mentioned that uh, when we talked before we started the recording that you and most or all of your listening audience are have that sense of waking up at some point and saying to oneself, there's something really wrong here. And we all have done that. Those who are on a path of waking up and learning and breaking through this hologram of deception that we're in, we had an innate sense, wherever that came from, when we were young or somewhere along in our life, that there's something distinctly radically wrong. Uh, there's life. We look at life. We look at young children playing. In fact, I'm sitting in a park right now and I'm watching little kids play and there's this the purity of life and innocence of life. And we all knew that when we were children because we embodied that innocence. But then the, the hologram or the system that we were in, socially, familial, politically, uh, all those things, and we grew up in economically and otherwise, that system kept uh, beating that purity of life, that innocence of standing as life within us, and we had to, just for pure survival, conform to that. But at the same time, we had to conform for just sheer survival. But at the same time, we had a sense that, no, I'm not going to give up what I know about that there's something really wrong here, and I'm here, I'm committed to do something about that. So that was my motivating uh, passion from a very early age. And so I... I had a predilection to um, reading and exploring in terms of intellectually. And so from really about the age of seven, I set out with a with the intent to figure out what's wrong here, what is going on in this world. And uh, I also had a very strong passion for uh, for doing it, not as a reactive uh, polarization, but as uh, to to understand a system that we're in in order to redirect it for solutions. And there's a real important key here, which is you, you mentioned, uh, you know, your work and many of you who are listening, the context of the name. And as we get into this conversation, I'm going to address that point. Uh, but you also said that within the context of getting out of the system. The fact is we can't get out of the system. We are hardwired in and as the system. And there is a, um, for lack of a better word, a benefit to that fact. We can use that to our purpose. Um, and that's part of the theme of what I want to get into in this conversation, how to not remain separate from the existence and the reality we're in. Because separation creates polarity. And polarity, no matter how much you think your side is more correct or more um, whatever. It's, it's, it's got more of a um, grounding in the purpose or intent that you have. If you're in a polarity, you're still attached to the other side of it. You know, it's, it's the nature of, uh, of the physical reality we're in. You know, no atom exists without a positive proton and a negative electron. If it has an imbalance in that charge, then it seeks to balance it. That creates, you know, ionic charge, molecules, et cetera, et cetera. That actually is the sort of the grounding point of the inherent physical reality we're in. So we must stand as a balance with the polarity and, um, and equalize that within ourselves. And that's what I've discovered over 40, 50 years of studying the system, cracking the codes of the matrix and going very deep into the legal, financial, monetary, political, and historical basis of where we're at, how we got into this mess, and how we can use it to redirect it. Because the key is not to polarize with the system, but to use inherent structure in it, which is there in law, and we'll talk about that, uh, there is a, uh, a basis in law to achieve a remedy. And that remedy is to, in a sense, neutralize any polarity so that the system cannot um, be in a dominant or directing position. 
we want and we don't want to be dominant but we want to be the directive principle we want if we want to change this world to a world that works for everyone in all life and all beings then we have to be the direct and directive principle to direct it if we separate from it and get quote unquote out of it then the system will continue in the direction it's in which is essentially the destruction of life the entire system is built on an esoteric principle as a cult of death. And that's the other aspect of my life pursuits. From a very early age, I was really compelled with a passion to study metaphysics, um, all those paths. And I've been doing it literally since like seven years old, reading voraciously, studying and, and all the rest of that. And once I started studying law and history and money and the money mechanics and all of the elements of the matrix system, then I could see because of my previous 30 years in continuing study of the esoteric side, how they were just mirror images and how that was used to, uh, to control. And the control was to play both sides against the middle and control both sides and stand as the uh, directed principle in the middle. And so we must integrate all of that within ourselves in order to do what I've just described, to become the directed principle, to direct this world, to be what we want it to be. Cool. I do know that you've used the term to get out, you've got to go in. And um, right. yeah. you wrote yeah. something really cool about uh, uh, something that um, was cool, I think it was a recording as well, called Going, going to Peace. Now, I just want right. to um, make a couple of quotes out of what you said there. Um, we go to peace or we perish. Um, the system is mm -hmm. based on the principle of war. Um, the enemy is within. That is a very important point. Um, here's another quote from there. The entire word world population is structured as enemies of the state under martial law or military occupation. Equalizing ourselves within and so doing manifests a world of peace without. So what I really would love you to, to uh, talk about is, is this part of this is for me this is a very large part is that what we create within is what we see without. So that would be really cool if you would um, talk about that. Okay, great. Um, so a slight variation of that phrase that you use, the enemy is within. It's not that there is an enemy because ultimately for me, how I see it, there is no enemy. Okay. But what does exist within ourselves is our own separation, our own separation from life, our own separation from the essence of our own being. And so in that separation, we create within ourselves what I just talked about, the polarity. And what we do is that, that uh, let, let's start from the premise that we are, in fact, creation itself. To, uh, not a deified construct in the mind of creation, but we are simply as a being, in the essence of who we are as life, we are creation. Um, one and equal, that means I'm not a God above you, you have the same capacity standing as creation to direct creation. Uh, you know, reflecting back to what I was just saying as the directive principle. But somewhere along the line, a long time ago, we went into separation. For whatever reason that is, that's probably a long conversation for another time, but we did it. How do we know that? Because look at the word we've created. We've created a world of separation on every basis in every category you know we could name the whole list we don't need to do that we all know those those points um, and so in that separation in our own denial of that we created something that became a system within us we systematize our own separation and so we started projecting it outside of ourselves and something outside of ourselves that gets down to the issue of responsibility. We don't take responsibility for having done that within ourselves and hence we project it outside of ourselves and something outside of ourselves is responsible. It's their fault. It's, you know, their meaning, you know, start with mom, dad, brother and sister, 
in our first experiences um, and on up through school and society and politics and the world system, something outside of ourselves is responsible for how I feel, how I experience things. But the, in that is a denial of my own responsibility for being uh, my own point of separation.